I've been collecting antique teacups for quite a while now, and over those years, I have come up with my own things that I look for when I'm purchasing antique teacups. If you want some tips on what to look for, what not to look for, and how to figure out if a teacup is good or not, follow along on our journey. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Tea with Jan. I am Jan. Today, yep, we're looking at antique teacups. And why do I have these? <laughs> <laughs> if you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and follow along for all things tea related. If you've been around for a while, you know that these are not my normal teacups that I collect. I collect a very specific teacup. It is Ainsley is the maker and it has to be at least from like the 50s, 60s at the earliest or, you know, later. It also has to be the color turquoise. And it has to be usable because I'm going to drink out of them. So you might be like, Jan, what are you doing with all these teacups? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I have a problem. <laughs> and I haven't talked to you guys about this. <laughs> someday, someday we will discuss the vast amount of teacups that are not turquoise Ainsley's. <laughs> For today, however, we are going to use these teacups to demonstrate how to purchase a teacup, an antique teacup. Let's just get this one from precariously sitting up there. All right, let's move these backs up. There, that's a little bit safer feeling. As you know, I've always stated that when you're collecting or starting out to collect antique teacups, that you might want to narrow it down by either a maker or, you know, a year or a color or something, because otherwise your teacup collection can get out of hand. However, I do love mix matched as well, so maybe that's your maybe that's your jam. Maybe it's like I want mix matched and I'm just going to fill my house with teacups. Who am I to judge? <laughs> so there's many different ways that you can buy antique teacups. You can buy online, so Etsy or eBay. You can look through Instagram and find different places to purchase teacups. I'll leave some information as well in the description down below. And that online is great. There has to be you know, a little bit of trust with who you're buying from because what one person considers a flea bite is completely different to what another person considers a flea bite. As well, you know, you might run into somebody that repairs a teacup and doesn't disclose that to you. So you really want to be able to trust the person that you're purchasing it from if it's online. Another way to purchase antique teacups, of course, is in person. So thrift stores are great because you might be able to score that really great deal or like yard sales and stuff. You, you, you might be completely shocked at what you can score for the price and for the quality and it's amazing. Another place is antique shops. That's where you're gonna pay a little bit more money, but chances are that you're gonna actually find something that you know is a little bit rarer or that is maybe a little bit more special. Maybe, I mean, thrift stores are great as well. I do find though that in the heat of the moment at a thrift store, I'm more likely to get, you know, lost in the moment and not actually follow through with, you know, checking the teacup over appropriately to make sure that it is going to manage to be in my collection. <laughs> I just get so excited that I am just like, oh my god, I can't believe I found this teacup for a dollar, and I snag it. And a lot of the times we thrift shop at, you know, um, charity thrift shops, and I'm completely fine with that. I don't really pay attention too much that way if it's going to a charity. So we have like an SPCA, and we have like, you know, a few different ones that Jeanette and I love to frequent. And... I'm completely fine if I get it home and then on further inspection it doesn't meet my standards and it doesn't make it into my permanent collection. I'm completely okay with that because I know that it's going, the money's going to a charity. However, all that to say, 
a great way to make sure that you're getting a good teacup is to give it a good going over. And how I do that is a few different ways that I have learned. The best thing is to make sure that you don't have gloves on. So I know in today's day and age, a lot of people are wearing gloves and you can't really feel in touch. So, you know, you can always use hand sanitizer before and after touching your teacups. The first thing that I like to do is kind of give it a go over, like who is the maker? So this one here, it is an Ainsley. That there, uh, back stamp, it will tell you a lot of information. So once you figure out what type or what, what maker you want, then you can figure out if the maker used different stamps throughout the years to figure out how old it is. So this one here is a Hammersley. Hammersley? I'm bad at pronouncing things. My apologies, um, my brain's still not 100% working well. So the second thing that I usually do is then I look at the color. So this one here, you can see that there's like a little imperfection on it. And I'll go around the whole thing and look for scrapes or scratches. The difficult thing, of course, especially at a thrift store more often than an antique store, is that a lot of times there's dirt on it. So it might be difficult to tell what is dirt or what's underneath that dirt. The other thing is that sometimes they put stickers in weird places. So here you can tell that there's a little bit of the paint chipped off and there's a little bit of like discoloration. It looks like when it was being painted, there was a little bit of gold put on the green by mistake when it was made. So you look at that. Then you can look at the back side and you can see on this one, that there's a little bit of kind of like bubbling and stuff underneath. And then the next thing that I do is I will then start really feeling the cup over. So if you take your finger and you're just gonna go around. So if you look closely at this teacup, it actually has dents down. Those are on purpose and that's how the cup is made. But if you feel around, you can feel if there is a rough spot and if somebody either painted over it, trying to hide that rough spot or that crack. Now the next thing, I, and I do that everywhere, so I'm trying to like feel my way around and I do that on the plate as well. So you go around and you feel, and you really just give it a good touching with your hands. Another thing to really be mindful of is the handle. So the handle is one of the most frequent places that is going to be tried to be repaired if it's broken. So you wanna give that a really good close looking over. And a lot of times it's like right where it joins to the cup. So you wanna really pay attention. And again, using your hands to feel it over, to see if there's anything going on or anything amok and you're just really trying to make sure that there's no nicks, that there's no nothing. The next thing that I have noticed is that sometimes there can be like um, a crack or that almost like the base is cracked off. And just, an, and this actually, I, I, <laughs> I think I, I thought I was getting one that was at a really good deal. So, and, and I didn't because it was cracked and it was worthless because it completely fell apart. So the next thing that I would do is that I actually take the cup, if it's real bone china, it's gonna be translucent a little bit. So if you take the cup and you hold it up to the light, you can kind of see through it a little bit. And this is going to really illuminate any of those cracks or anything like that. So I can see on this one that there's like a little mark there. So then I go in with my fingernail and ever so gently I rub it back and forth and my fingernail catches slightly on it and that's when I can tell that there's something there but looking at it this way I wouldn't be able to tell but when I hold it up there you can see that there's like a little darker mark and then putting your fingernail over top of it and scraping through you can feel it and that is how I would assess a teacup of course, it's perfect if you can actually fill it with water and see if it holds water. 
Another thing that you can do is you can buy one of the jewelry, what are these called? Loop, you know, the magnifying things, and you can actually go and use one of these. I only recently got this and I'm not very good at it. <laughs> so I, I find I still do the whole like, you know, like holding it up really close and stuff like that, but yes. Look at how beautiful this one is. This is a Paragon. Let me see if I can show you without breaking it. It's so beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful roses. These are both Ainsley's. And this one is like a beautiful royal blue. So pretty. That's another Ainsley, the corset shape. And that's another thing that you could just collect like corsets. Now the interesting thing is that these rosebuds, this is a Royal Albert. Forget me not roses. And I really like that shape, it's so pretty. I thought this one was pretty too, look at that. How beautiful is that? So pretty, so. And there you have it. The way that I look for teacups and what I look at. I want to know, do you guys collect antique teacups? Let me know in the comments down below. I can't wait to chat with you guys. Until next time, take care.